Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about the rising tension between the USA and China. If you've been following the channel, you'll know that back in August last year, I reported on the situation with regards to Nicola Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, which became a bit of a flashpoint between the two countries. And since that time, we've seen the USA apply a variety of sanctions against various Chinese companies to prevent them having access to USA technology. And then, of course, over the last couple of weeks, we've seen the incident of the Chinese weather balloon, when a large Chinese weather balloon suddenly appeared over nuclear sites in Montana and was ultimately shot down by an F-6 fighter jet. Now, following on from that incident, the USA has now sanctioned six Chinese telecommunication companies, which it claims are involved in international surveillance. And most recently, the US Defense Secretary, Antony Blinken, has come out and stated that intelligence sources have told the USA that China is on the verge of providing direct military support to Russia in its war against Ukraine. So in today's video, I'll have a look at exactly what Antony Blinken has said about China with regards to supplying military support to Russia. We'll then have a look at what China response to those accusations has been. I'll give you an update on the Chinese balloon situation and the fact that the USA has now shot down three more unidentified objects over the course of the last week or so. We'll have a recap on the situation in Taiwan, which is still bubbling away in the background. And then as a bit of light relief, we'll have a look at the nuclear arsenals that Russia, China and the USA have and compare who's got the most and who's spending the most on defence. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summaries to what I think is likely to happen over the course of the next three to six months with regards to this ongoing tension between the two biggest economic powers in the world and what the implications of all of this are for the global economy. So before we get started on all of that, if I could ask you for a thumbs up at some point during this video, if you're enjoying the content, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Don't forget, I always include chapters, so if you don't have time to watch everything, you can pick and choose what you'd like to see. And if you'd like to support the channel, please have a look below where you'll find links to YouTube, super thanks and membership, as well as buy me a coffee and Patreon. And as always, I'd like to say thank you so much to everyone that has supported the channel. Really, really appreciate it. We've been watching this very closely. To date, we have seen Chinese companies, and of course in China there's really no distinction between private companies and the state, we have seen them provide non-lethal support uh, to, uh, to Russia for use in Ukraine. The concern that we have now is based on information we have that they're considering providing lethal support. We are very concerned that China is considering providing lethal support to Russia in its aggression against Ukraine, uh, and I made clear that that would have uh, serious consequences uh, in our relationship as well, something that President Biden has shared directly with President Xi on several occasions. So as you've just seen, Antony Blinken has made a direct accusation that China is considering providing military support directly to Russia in its war against Ukraine. Now, unfortunately, Antony Blinken hasn't provided any information whatsoever in terms of what sort of military support China is thinking about providing. However, these are direct accusations against China, and they're coming at a time when tension is at an all-time high between the two countries. In direct response to these accusations, Chinese Minister Wang Li said that China had neither stood by idly nor thrown fuel on the fire for the Ukraine war. He went on to say that China would publish a document that laid out its position on settling the conflict and the document would state that the territorial integrity of all countries must be respected. I suggest that everybody starts to think calmly, especially friends in Europe, about what kind of efforts we can make to stop this war. So obviously that response doesn't really give us any indication as to what China are thinking because he hasn't actually answered the accusation of whether or not China is thinking about providing military support. However, what we do know is that the USA has sanctioned multiple Chinese companies that it accuses of providing some form of military support or assistance to Ukraine through the provision of its services. Chang Shetiani Space Science and Technology Research Institute is among 16 entities that have been slapped with curbs by the US Treasury Department. The firm, also known as Space City China, has offices in Beijing and Luxembourg and is alleged to have been providing satellite imagery to Ukraine to support the mercenary group Wagner in its combat operations for Russia. Under the sanctions, no transfer, payment or export of any property or interests in the United States is allowed to the targeted entities. In addition to Space City China, 15 other entities, 8 individuals and 4 aircraft, many of them based in Russia, that allegedly form part of Wagner's global support network also received US sanctions. These include Sewer Security Services based in Central Africa and Kratol Aviation based in the United Arab Emirates, 
which allegedly provided aircraft to move personnel and equipment between Central Africa, Libya and Mali. Now at this point of the video I was considering showing you the list of all of the Chinese companies that have been sanctioned by the USA and this is the official document here and the list actually starts at page 29 so we scroll down to page 29 to see where the Chinese companies start to be listed. So here we go People's Republic of China and we've got the first company listed here. However, I can't go through this because the list of companies is actually 200 pages long. So there is an enormous number of Chinese companies that have already been sanctioned by the USA. And this is before the accusations of any support from a military perspective to Russia. So what we're seeing here is rising tension between the two nations where we've now got hundreds and hundreds, potentially thousands of companies that are being sanctioned and the list is growing almost on a daily basis. As recovery continues of debris from what he called a Chinese spy balloon, Joe Biden has ordered the shooting down of three unidentifiable flying objects in as many days. We made sure to determine whether or not they were manned. They were not. We did, however, assess that their altitudes were considerably lower than the Chinese high-altitude balloon and did pose a threat to civilian commercial air traffic. The United States has been on a heightened state of alert since the discovery of the Chinese balloon and its aerial destruction off South Carolina. It caused concern last week when it was tracked above Montana, 200 miles from a missile base at Malmstrom. On Friday, a fighter jet shot down an unidentified object off northern Alaska. On Saturday, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced an unidentified object had been shot down over Yukon in northwest Canada. In the latest incident, an F-16 brought down another unidentified object over Lake Huron on the US-Canada border. They have increased their, um, uh, what they're looking at. And uh, so, you know, they're using technology that maybe they're using more resources. They're putting more resources on the problem. And so they're finding more. President Biden was criticized over a delay in shooting down the Chinese balloon. He's been quick to pull the trigger since. So initially, I think a lot of people considered the Chinese surveillance balloon story to be a bit of a joke, a bit of a hoax, a weather balloon that had drifted off course and found itself over the USA. However, it now seems that there are a number of these balloons that have been entering into different airspace over the course of the last few years. And the USA is now considering this to be a very serious form of security threat. And multiple objects have been shot down over the skies of the USA over the course of the last couple of weeks. And at the recent security meeting in Munich, Antony Blinken raised this directly with his Chinese counterpart. This was an opportunity to speak very clearly and very directly about the fact that China sent a surveillance balloon uh, over our territory, violating our sovereignty, violating uh, international law. And I told him quite simply that that was unacceptable and can never happen again. Uh, we're, of course, not the only ones on the receiving end of these surveillance balloons. More than 40 countries uh, have had these balloons fly over them <clears throat> uh, in recent years. Uh, and that, that's been exposed to the world. So once again, we're seeing the USA making direct accusations against China and telling them that there will be serious consequences if these sort of things carry on. Now, in terms of the Chinese response to this, Beijing has stated that the USA will bear all the consequences if it escalates the controversy over this balloon incident. Beijing will follow through to the end in the event the US insists on taking advantage of this issue, the foreign ministry said in a statement. So what we're seeing here is the USA making direct accusations against China and China have stated that they will not back down on this issue and that the USA will bear the consequences if they want to push the matter forward. Taiwan is an island in the Western Pacific Ocean that lies roughly 100 miles off the coast of southeastern China. The island is approximately 245 miles long and 90 miles wide. Taiwan was historically an independent country, however it became a colony of the Netherlands in the mid-17th century. It later regained independence, however China took control in the late 17th century and ruled the island for over 200 years. In 1895, following the First Sino-Japanese War, it became a colony of Japan. However, the island returned to Chinese rule in 1945, following Japan's defeat in World War II. In 1949, Mao Zedong's communist forces took control of China and declared the People's Republic of China in Beijing. 
The previous ruling Nationalist Party retreated to Taiwan where it declared the Republic of China and cut all contact with mainland China. In 1950, Taiwan became an ally of the United States which was at war with China in Korea and the US deployed a fleet into the Taiwan Strait to protect its ally from possible attack from mainland China. The first Taiwan Strait crisis started in 1954 when China launched military attacks on some smaller islands off the southeast coast, which Taiwan subsequently lost control of. In 1958, China launched a second wave of military offensives against two islands that were close to the Chinese mainland, Kinmen and Matsu, and Taiwan fought back with some US supplied weapons. In 1979, the USA endorsed the One China policy and switched its diplomatic recognition from Taipei to Beijing. This change of stance by the USA was confirmed by the Taiwan Relations Act, which made clear that the US decision to establish diplomatic ties with Beijing rested upon the expectation that the future of Taiwan would be determined by peaceful means. And under that act, Washington was obliged to help Taiwan with the means to defend itself. In 1996, Taiwan decided to hold its first direct presidential vote, which caused the third Taiwan Strait crisis after Beijing launched missiles into the waters near Taiwan. The US responded by dispatching aircraft to the region, and the Taiwan president won victory by a landslide in March. In 2000, Taiwan elected a new president representing the Democratic Progressive Party, which supports Taiwanese sovereignty and formal independence. In 2016, a new president was elected for the DPP based on a manifesto of standing up to China. In response to this, China suspended all official communications with Taiwan. Later in 2016, US President-elect Donald Trump broke decades of US diplomatic precedents by speaking directly by telephone with the president of Taiwan. In 2017, the Donald Trump administration approved 1.4 billion worth of arms sales to Taiwan, which prompted anger from Beijing. In March 2018, Donald Trump signed legislation that encouraged the USA to send officials to Taiwan to meet Taiwanese counterparts and vice versa, which again infuriated China. And in September of 2018, the US State Department approved the sale to Taiwan of spare parts for F-16 fighter jets and other military aircraft worth up to $330 million, drawing a warning from China that it jeopardized cooperation between Beijing and Washington. In July 2022, US President Joe Biden and the Chinese President held a two-hour call where Biden underscored that the United States policy has not changed and that the United States strongly opposes unilateral efforts to change the status quo or undermine peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait. So the situation in Taiwan remains on knife edge. And in some ways, there are similarities between what happened in Ukraine with Russia and what's happening in Taiwan with China. China considers Taiwan to be part of its territory. However, as we've just seen, Joe Biden and the USA have stated that if China do invade Taiwan, then the USA will potentially step in in support of Taiwan. And that would obviously cause a major incident between the two countries. Now, whenever we talk about tension between superpowers, the biggest countries in the world, there's always the potential risk of a nuclear incident because all these countries have nuclear weapons. And I thought it'd be interesting to have a look at how large the nuclear arsenals are that are held by the USA, Russia, China and the other countries that have access to nuclear weapons. Now, as we've discussed before, the information relating to nuclear weapons is very secretive, but it's well covered in the media. So I'm going to share with you some data that's been provided by visualcapitalist.com, which gives the latest estimates of the current arsenals that are being held by the superpowers. So this graphic gives a visual representation of the size of the arsenals. And you can see that the two largest nuclear arsenals in the world are held by the USA and Russia. And the nuclear weapons that both have have been split into three different categories. Deployed, which relates to warheads that have been deployed on intercontinental missiles, at heavy bomber bases, or on bases with operational short-range delivery systems. And as you can see, the USA has 1,800 nuclear weapons that have been deployed, compared with Russia's 1,600. The next category of nuclear weapons are reserved, 
which are warheads that are in storage and not deployed on launchers. And the USA is reported to have 2,000 nuclear weapons in reserve, compared with 2,897 for Russia. And the final category is retired, which are warheads that are still intact, but are lined up for dismantlement. And the USA have 1,750 retired nuclear weapons, compared with 1,760 for Russia. So when you look at all three categories, the USA have 5,550 nuclear weapons, compared with 6,257 for Russia. If we now scroll down and look at the other countries that have nuclear weapons, you can see that the next largest is China, with 350 nuclear missiles, followed by France at 290, the UK 225, Pakistan 165, India 160, Israel 90, and North Korea 45. So these are the only countries in the world that are reported to have access to nuclear missiles. Obviously, there's a number of other countries who've been working on development of missiles. However, countries such as Iran have been sanctioned as a direct result of trying to develop these missiles. Now, taking a step back and looking at the overall position here, obviously, if China was to team up with Russia in some form of military alliance, then that would create a large arsenal of nuclear weapons. However, the USA is already in the NATO alliance with France and the UK. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because we've seen tension rising between the USA and China over the course of the last few years. These are the two largest countries in the world in terms of their economies. And originally, it was forecast that China would overtake the USA by around 2025. However, given what's happened in the Chinese economy over the course of the last 18 months, that's now looking less likely. And we don't know whether or not it will overtake the USA. It remains to be seen. But either way, there is tension between the two nations. And one of the frustrations from the USA's point of view is that China have remained entirely neutral with regards to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. All of the West have come out and condemned the invasion. That's why we've seen the multiple sanctions being imposed against Russia. However, the outcome of the recent meeting between Russia and China was that they stated that they wanted to have unlimited boundaries in terms of the amount of trade. And we've certainly seen China picking up the pace in terms of buying energy products from Russia. It's been one of the biggest markets for it. And that situation is causing direct tension with the USA because it's lessening the impact of the sanctions. If China wasn't buying oil and gas and other commodities from Russia. Russia would be struggling to find markets and therefore its income would be reducing faster. But the fact that China is prepared to take large volumes is enabling Russia to still receive some income and carry on funding its war efforts. So this is starting to raise the tensions. And the fact that the USA has now accused China directly of potentially providing military support to Russia is really upping the ante in terms of this war of words. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, no detail has been provided by the USA as to what military support China is considering giving to Russia. And I guess it will only come to light as and when that situation unfolds. And if it transpires that China does provide direct military support to Russia, then that will really be drawing a line in the sand. This will be throwing the gauntlet down to the USA. And I think at that point, there would be a serious risk of relations breaking down between the two nations. Firstly, from a trade perspective, and we've already seen some of that happening over the course of the last six months. I reported in a recent video that the USA has now cut off the supply of a variety of technology to China because it believes that China was trying to copy that technology to develop its own semiconductors with artificial intelligence. And if the relationship does break down, then it's likely that we will see even more sanctions being applied against Chinese companies. And as we saw earlier in the video, there's a list that's over 200 pages long that's already listing the companies that have been sanctioned. So that list could get even longer. But if we do see a breakdown from an economic relationship relationship point of view, there is obviously a risk that it could develop into some form of conflict. And as it stands at the moment, we've got three different potential sources that could spark off that conflict. The first is obviously this supply of materials directly to Russia. The second is what's going on with regards to these surveillance balloons. And there seems to be multiple incidents that have been identified over the course of the last few weeks. And the third is what's happening in Taiwan. And if China does decide that it wants to send forces into Taiwan, that would be the break point that potentially would draw the USA in to support Taiwan and potentially also NATO. And then we would have a real situation where we could potentially be 
looking down the barrel of World War III. But in terms of whether or not I think that's going to happen, I think it's unlikely as it stands at the moment. I think the last thing that the USA wants at the moment is to force China into some form of military conflict because that would then enable Russia to develop an alliance. And we would be looking at serious consequences, not just for the global economy, but for the whole world in terms of multiple loss of life. So I don't think realistically it's a logical outcome. I don't think USA and China would want to go to war. But the more we see more of these incidents and the more we see tensions rising, the more it's pushing China towards Russia to developing a stronger bond and creating a new Cold War environment. So there is a possibility that over the course of the next year or so, we could see those two countries getting closer together and we could see the creation of a new East-West divide that would have serious consequences in the long term for the global economy. So as with all of these issues, this is an ongoing matter. It's live. These things are happening on a daily, weekly basis. So I'll keep you posted on any further news as and when it develops. If you've liked what I've said today, then please give me a thumbs up. And thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end.